Hello, pre-calc kids. Welcome back to another lesson in AP Pre-Calculus. This is Mr. Bean, and today we're going to look at how to create equations, parametric equations, for circles and lines. Some pretty basic things with just lines and circles. Not doing anything besides that, so hopefully this won't be too bad for you. Before we get going, though, we're going to first look at lines. Second, we'll look at circles. So with lines, let's remember back to our Algebra 1 days. And remember in Algebra and Pre-Algebra where we would want to create an equation of a line and all we needed was slope and a point. Now if that point was also the initial point, the y-intercept, then it was super easy. What was the form? It was slope-intercept form, which is y equals. This is the one thing that lots of people don't remember algebra, but for the rest of their lives they tend to remember this. And that is y equals mx plus b, where you have your slope and you have your y-intercept, your initial value. Okay, so what we're going to do is something similar to that with parametric equations. So how do we define lines? There's lots of ways to define lines parametrically. Okay, you could have lots of different equations that represent the same line. What we're going to do is one way in which we just start off with an initial position. We're going to call it x1, y1. This is just some coordinate point. Okay, that's all this is. It's a coordinate point on the line. If we have a coordinate point on the line, then we need the rates of change for the x component and then a rate of change for the y component. If we have those things, then we can create a parametrically defined function that represents a line. So here's the steps. Here's what we're going to do. So if we have two points, then we're going to take these two given points and we're going to name one of them as our initial point. We'll call it at time t equals zero. Okay, we just call it one x1, y1 as the first point. And that happens when the time is zero. The second point, we'll just say that happens at time equals one. Okay, that's it. We're just arbitrarily saying that t equals zero and t equals one. We could say lots of t values if we wanted and still create the same exact line. It would just be different equations for it and different parameters for t. Uh, okay, and then that's just the second point. x2, y2 here represents a different point from x1, y1. Now, once we have that, we have to figure out the rates of change for both x and y. We did this in our last lesson, right? So our, x, our uh, change in x over our change in t values. Well, the change in t values is just 1 minus 0 because if I'm going from 0 to 1, that's real simple. It's just going to be 1. And then same with the change in y. We take the two y values, subtract them, and then we're going to divide by 1. And what does that leave us with? That's going to leave us with the following parametric equations where we have our initial x value and we add the rate of change of x times t. Okay, so this is kind of like this, right? This is like mx b plus so that's what this looks like. It's y equals mx plus b, just kind of reversed. So it's the slope times the variable, and then plus the initial value that we start with. That's exactly what we're doing here. Same with the y value. It's the same type of thing. All right, so let's try this out. Let's see what we go, what we get here. Find the set of parametric equations for the line that passes through the points with negative 1, 3, and 3, 6. Now, parametric equations have direction. This does not tell us which direction we're going, right? Are we starting at negative 1, 3 and going to 3, 6? Or are we starting at 3, 6 and going backwards to negative 1, 3? Well, since the problem doesn't say, then we can just choose. I'm going to say this is our initial point here. I'm going to say that when t equals 0, we're at the coordinate point negative 1, 3. And then I will say when t equals 1, we're at the point 3, comma 6. Now what that does is that lets us now find, we need to find the change in x, the rate of change of x. And that's just going to be the two x values subtracted. So let's do 3 minus a negative 1 if I can not be so sloppy. So right, there's the two x values. And then on bottom, what was that? We had one minus zero, right? Because we're going from t equals one to t equals, z t equals zero to t equals one. So one minus zero. And then that each just equals four. Now let's find the change in y with respect to time, t. So again, now we're looking at the y values. So I'm looking at these two values, six and three. So we'll say six minus three all over one minus zero. That's going to give us a three. Now that we have that, now we can come up with our parametric equations to represent the line. And that is that x of t is going to equal, so we're starting with the first value of x, so that's the negative 1, right? That's the first point here, negative 1. So negative 1, and then we're adding the rate of change of x times our variable t, so it's 4t. And then the y of t is going to equal, where did we start off with y? It was a 3. So 3 plus, and then the rate of change of y, it's changing by 3 every t. 
And that is our parametric equations that go through the points negative 1, 3, and 3, 6. It's going to create a straight line. So let's just verify this real quick. So one way of verifying is just to graph them. And so if we uh, if we looked at uh, the different techniques we had, you could find the slope using our algebra one skills of three, four, use it with a point negative one, three, you get point slope form. So this is just all algebra stuff here, just going through until we get mx plus b. Okay, so this is what that line looks like with algebra one. The, if we used parametric equations, which is what we did, we came up with these two things, negative one plus four t, three plus three t, and then you get exactly the same points. But we don't know, like if, okay, we don't have any restriction on parameters, so I guess I could have put arrows, but if we were restricting the parameter to only t equals zero to t equals one, then this is what the line would look like, just a, a quick little line segment. But they're the same thing, right? These are the same line. Okay, so that's how you create parametric equations with just two points that creates a, uh, uh, creates a line. Now let's look at circles. So reverse circles, let's recall a few things. We're gonna pull our, back some cobwebs here to geometry, algebra two, a little bit of unit three that we did earlier this year. Uh, and that is, first of all, equation of a circle. Where is the equation of a circle? What's the formula that we're, we're already supposed to know? Some of you are like, what? I don't know a formula for a circle. Well, it's this, x squared plus y squared equals r squared. Okay, where r is the radius. So if you had this equation, that gives you a circle on the coordinate plane, on an xy coordinate plane, where r equals the radius of that circle. Okay, so we could take this same exact circle and then instead of it being at the origin, the center, instead of the center being at the origin, we could shift it to some value hk. So maybe shift it left or right, up or down, and then that equation would then be this here, x minus h squared plus y minus k squared equals r squared. So it's exactly the same as this, it's just now we have it at a some different center, not at zero, zero. Okay, so this is important to, for you to know for some of the other things we'll be doing with circles when we change it into parametrics. Now, uh, what we learned in unit three was this stuff. This whole formula here with this x, y, r, the radius is an r, and if the x value is equivalent to r cosine theta, right? So we learned this before, and that y is equivalent to r sine theta. That's the y value of any coordinate point. Okay, so that's where these things come from. That's just a quick reminder. You don't need to write anything down there. That's just to remind you that, of what we're doing. So now that we have that, we can go to a circle. How do we define it? Well, if we have a unit circle where it's just the radius is r, and when we're centered at the origin. So this is as basic a circle we can get. Radius of one centered at the origin. The formula for that is the x component is cosine t and the y component is just sine t. Now this means that it is going to go around in a circle counterclockwise like that, right? It's gonna go this direction, counterclockwise. So if you wanted to go the other way, you could swap it and make it sine t, cosine t, but I'm telling you in this lesson, everything we're working with, we're just gonna do cosine of t is gonna just be part of the x value to make it rotate counterclockwise. Okay, that's just so you recognize which direction it's headed. All right, so that's the very basic circle for a parametric equation. The one that's a little bit more complicated than that is this. If we want to have any circle and we're centered at hk, you can write it with parametric equations as this, where you have r cosine of t plus h for the x value. And for the y component, we have r sine of t plus k. So notice the, the r has to go in front. And what is r? r is the radius. r is the radius of the circle. And then x goes with the cosine, just like we've done before. Our, the y goes with the sign, and then we're gonna sh shift it. We add on whatever h is, that's the center. We add on whatever k is for the y value, and that's the sign, the, the center of the circle for these things. Okay, really not too bad, but you do have to memorize these things and where they come from. So let's try one example here with a circle. Find the parametric equations for the circle here. So I've given it to you in this rectangular form. So let's recognize a couple of things. What do we have? We have a center, center at two, negative four. So that's the first thing to recognize is where is the center of the circle? And then what is the radius? Well, r squared equals four. If r squared equals four, then my radius is just going to equal two, the square root of that. We don't have to do plus or minus two because you're not gonna have a negative radius. That's not possible. So we have r equals two. So now that we have that, it's really, really easy to come up with 
the parametric equations for this. So let's just do both components. So x of t is going to equal, so we have the radius of 2, and then x is with the cosine, so cosine of t, and then plus the x-coordinate of the center, which is just a 2 here. And then the y component of this parametric function is, what's uh, the radius is still 2, and then we say sine of t, and then what is the y component of the center? The y is a negative 4, so we'll say minus 4. And those two combined will give you the parametric equations. Those two combined will create the circle, and then let's just sketch the circle over here. So we go uh, right 2 down negative 4, 1, 2, 1, 2, 3, 4. There's my center, and then the radius is 2. So up 2, right 2, down 2, and then you get a graph that looks something like this. And hopefully that doesn't look too much like an egg. All right, so that's everything we've covered at all. It's pretty basic for this. We're just practicing how to do lines, how to do circles. Do remember that on the lines, there's lots of ways that you could come up with those equations, right? You could come up with lots of different ways a particle could travel along this line using lots of different types of equations and different t values. So what we're doing is just one technique to be able to come up with what we learned here in this part of the lesson. All right, so that's it. This is Mr. Bean signing off. Rock that master check. I'll see you back in the next lesson.